What's good with it? It's the homie Mac, music art coach of knowledge, reporting live from the Dogon. Uh, real quick, um, I appreciate all the likes, all the shares, all the comments, all the subscribers, uh, even all the naysayers, the people that uh, <laughs> come here and troll. You know, it's all good. Um, I actually had a couple people apologize to me for that. You know, but it is what it is. Uh, peace and love to all. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so you can get all the updates. Live from the Dogon. Live from the Dogon. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially someone asked me, uh, well, so I was I was asking somebody for like a topic, something that I could discuss. <clears throat> and um, beautiful sister uh she told me that i should i should po uh i should uh respond to the the questioning of can you be black can you be pro black and date and marry outside of your race like what are the dynamics into all that how does that all that how does all that play out so essentially i want to talk about uh that and i guess the whole concept of love marriage interracial dating all that stuff interracial marriage <clears throat> and the first thing i want to say is the whole concept of dating for love, dating for affection, that is a fairly new uh, social phenomenon within human history. Uh, from antiquity uh, to probably, uh, what, pre-industrial revolution? And even somewhat post-industrial revolution, people didn't really get married because they love someone. I mean, that's why you have dowries set up. Like, you know, a dowry being if a man marries into, in certain cultures, when a man marries a woman, her, his father has to pay a fee to the to the uh, to the wife's father because it's, it's an exchange, it's a business, and a lot of times um, those these exchanges would only come across uh, w w those these exchanges would only be in context of some type of social mobility. So essentially, um, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, Tim has a daughter, and Tim is a farmer. And uh, Tim knows, well, you know, I want my I want my daughter to be financially secure. I want her to be upwardly mobile and her progeny to be upper, upwardly mobile. So he, he says, you know, his, his daughter likes Sam. Um, but he's like, nah, you don't want, I don't want you dealing with Sam because, uh, you know, Samuel, Sam, Sammy, uh, he's not upwardly mobile. Yeah, he's a great guy, but he shovels shit for a living. I want I want you to deal with uh, Tommy because Tommy uh, he has his own business. Um, he's socially mobile. He's very uh, very physically wise as far as you know spending things like that, and um, he has a lot of assets. So what happens is the father gets his daughter, tells her, "No, you're not dealing with Sammy. You're gonna deal with Tommy because Tommy uh, Tommy essentially got the bag and." you guys will have a, a high standard of quality of life. Is it fair? Is it right? Hey, it is what it is. Um, so I'm, I'm saying all that to say, when it comes to marriage, yeah, I believe people can love who they want to love, but at the core of it all, like, marriage is a business. You know, and, and my thing is, I have no issue with interracial dating. I don't look at somebody who's married to a white woman and say, oh, you're a coon. Oh, you're a sellout. I don't. I don't look at it in that context. I. I. But the thing is, a lot of people. If we're talking about nation building, if we're talking about building strong families, um, the the criticism is going to be the one of the most revolution. In, in, as, in 2020, one of the most revolutionary things a black man can do is marry a black woman and have a black family and maintain. A, a strong family unit. That is one, as simple as that is, that is one of the most revolutionary things a black man can do in 2020. So my thing is this, when, when, we're, when we're dealing in the context of capitalism and marriage, and when you factor in nation building and economic self-determination, you factor in lineage, you factor in politics, you factor in, okay, we need strong black communities. So what one, what more could I do? What what one of the main ways? Let me slow down. One of the one of the main ways I can give back to my community, give back to black people, is by marrying a black woman, sustaining a healthy black household, uh, developing assets, building strong communities. So 
a lot of times, again, when we're thinking Western culture, marriage, we're thinking business. A lot of times, like again, this whole concept of romantic love is fairly new. So the criticism towards that black man that may be dealing with a white woman or a woman outside of his race is going to be, well, you know, what, what better way could you give back to the black community than, again, like I said, than to marry a black woman and have black babies and, and, and build generational wealth, build an infrastructure economically, politically that can uplift the black race. So when we're thinking politics and business, strictly politics and strictly business, I can understand why somebody would say, well, are you, if you're really pro-black, why wouldn't you marry a black woman and build a black family unit and that money could go into black communities and black businesses, the, the, the union that you have with that woman? Because again, marriage is a business. <laughs> you need a, a, what, a, a mar there's a marriage license, it's a business. And my thing is, if we're talking about the concept of romantic love, yeah, I think that you, I don't, I don't think being a black man and dealing with a woman outside of your race uh, doesn't mean that you, doesn't mean that you don't love black people, doesn't mean that you can't give back to black people. I believe that you can be married to a white woman or an Asian woman or a Latino woman and still have love for black people. But again, if we're dealing with cultural nationalism, if we're dealing with the economics, the politics, the business of this, the critique is, well, do you really love black people? Because if you did, again, this is the this is this is the the overarching theme here. Again, then you then you would marry a black woman, have a black family, black children, and again, you you would uh, ameliorate or enhance just just uplift the black community economically, politically, socially. That would be the end game. Strong family structures, strong strong family units build strong nations. So uh, again, my, my thing is I think you can, if, we, if we're talking strictly rom romance, love, affection, yeah, I think you can still marry or date outside your race and love black people. I think you can marry outside your race and look out for black people. I think you can marry outside of your race as a black man and still give back to black communities. I, I don't I don't negate that in any sense. But again, you know, I remember uh listening to uh this guy in the alt right talk. And for those who don't know, the alt right is essentially a a, a neo neo fascist uh white supremacist white supremacist group um that um I would I would want to say they came to their ascension. Well, I didn't really notice them at least till around maybe towards the end of Obama's incumbency and towards the start of Trump, uh, Trump's, um, uh, Trump's uh, start of his uh, term or whatever. That's when I found out about the alt-right. But I, I listened to the guy that was talking in the alt-right. I can't recall his name. But he was saying, you know, America is a business. America is essentially is built, on the pram is built, on, built around the premise or the parameters of manifest destiny. And by manifest destiny, meaning you compete for resources. You do what is best for your people. You do what is best to put your uh, put people in a position where they're winning. And by that, he at, at the end of that, he also said, it's not about morality. It's not about right and wrong. It is about winning. So my thing is this. A lot of times when you find people that are critiquing brothers that marry and date outside their race, that a lot of times is in context of the things I said earlier about self-determination, building strong, strong black, black families. And it's also um, in context of responding how a lot of white, to, and a lot of it also is in context to responding to how a lot of white nationalists feel. And how a lot of white nationalists, again, their end game is to win by any means, socially, economically, politically. This is war. <laughs> this is straight warfare. So, I, and I know people want to say, well, oh, Marie, you sound like a hotel, and, you know, love is love. Okay, I get it. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's, like Huey, it's like Huey News said, everything is political. Who you marry is political. Who you don't marry is a political move. Who you uh, kick you with, who you hang out with, who, who you uh, congregate with consistently. All of, that is, all of that is on the political spectrum. It doesn't... I mean, you. I remember a guy told me, um, 
you may not want to have anything to do with politics, but politics will always have something to do with you. So let's let, let's let's be cognizant of the fact that again, this is not this is Western culture. This is America. This is this this is social Darwinism. This is competition. You know, and and I know that may sound extreme, but the reality is this uh, this is a business. America is 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 more than just waving a flag. I mean, the world over, it is more than just nationalism. It is a business. Nationalism, business, all things human centered, um, correlate or are done in context to finances. <laughs> you know, I hate to say that. Um, but that's just the reality of the world we're in. But again, um, I'm not big on telling somebody who they should love, who they should marry. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. I, I understand both sides of the spectrum. And what I'm saying is, yes, you can care about black people, love black people, and marry outside your race and date outside your race. And um, I, I would say, as far as like the whole tip thing, I really... I hate how the term hotep has be, has become denigrated, how it's become debased, how uh, the, the the it's been bastardized from its original meaning. We know we all know the, the word hotep, uh, it means peace. Uh, when I think of hotep, I think of the multi-genius emotep. He was what, a mathematician, an uh, architect, a doctor. Like this man, again, multi-genius. And I think uh, as black people, we've done a disservice by throwing dirt on the name Hotel, because it, again, it bastardizes it from its original premise. And I, but, but I do understand, um, I guess, the context of why the term is been bastardized. I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But I guess people are looking at it like extreme black cultural nationalism is judgmental. It's homophobic. It's, it's anti-white. It's uh, reverse racism, which I think is complete BS. But I understand. I guess the gist of what they mean by that, and and they feel like uh, it's very judgmental. Um, they feel like the whole concept of being a hotep is just it's pseudo scientific, and some of it is. I think you have you do have guys that are hotep hustlers that um, essentially take the knowledge. Like you got you got to know. I grew up on Dr. Diop, Dr. Clark. Uh, I'm I'm one of their disciples. Dr. Diop, Dr. Clark. Dr. John Henry Clark, um, you know, Dr. Dr. Yosef Ben Yakina, uh, Dr. Khaled Muhammad. I'm coming from that school of thought. So the thing was, you don't, you don't mon like you don't monetize this hustle. It's not a hustle. First of all, it's not a hustle. Um, Self determination, building up your people culturally, intellectually, socially, politically is not a hustle. It shouldn't be a hustle at least, <laughs> but it has become a hustle to some people. So I, I understand the, uh, I guess the 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 qualms that people have have with the quote-unquote hoteps, but I, I think uh, in response to that, some people have taken it too far, and anyone that is has a black nationalist paradigm or that wants to uplift black people, I think a lot of times they get uh, falsely denigrated and, 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 and falsely accused of being a hotep or an extreme cultural nationalist. You can love black people and not hate, be anti anyone else, you know, and then some some people say, well, you know, hotels they love white girls. They really, they secretly hate sisters, and they got Stockholm syndrome. Low key, they love white culture. They love white people. They love white women. And the thing is, um, I've seen some of that. I've seen some of that. You know, you talking about my beautiful melanated queen, and then you got you dealing with Becky over there. And I understand that can be a conflict or an interest. That sounds hypocritical. It is what it is. But I, but I think. Um, I, can't, I think it might have been, uh, who said it? Dr. Naeem Akbar. I believe he said that uh, in, in, inside of most black people, there, there's something that he called uh, plantation psychosis, where we have a bias towards all things Eurocentric. And my thing is, how could we not? I mean, uh, from our parents to our grandparents to our great-grandparents and beyond, like since we got off the boat and came here, um we have been indoctrinated into a white paradigm. We White people have basically, everything that fits their aesthetic um, was always uplifted. Even if you look scientifically with phrenology, if you had a, uh, a, a, a Caucasoid phenotype or 
just your, your, your phenotypical expression was Eurocentric, European, white. That was considered beautiful, intelligent, wise, smart. And you look in the mirror and you're black and you don't have, that, that doesn't, you don't look like that. So that doesn't resonate, you, resonate with you. So you feel like you're the antithesis of that. So in a subconscious way, you've put all things white, all things European on a pedestal. I don't care how woke you are, how deep, how many books you read. We all have an inherent white bias. I think white psychosis is real, you know, and I think that is only overcome by really learning about your history, finding beauty in yourself, appreciating yourself, and, and spending time to study, learning about uh, what the people throughout your lineage have done, how they've uplifted your race, how, how black is beautiful, accepting and embracing the black aesthetic. But yeah, this is your boy Mac, Music Art Culture Knowledge. Peace and love to all. Subscribe to the YouTube channel 82 Kings. Uh, follow the movement on Instagram, MacTV underscore 82. You know, I wish nothing but blessings for everyone in the year 2020. Peace and love to all. Get at me, man. My email is get at MacTV Podcast at gmail.com. Peace and love. We out.